We're going to do four little mini lectures here about geologic structures, and we're going to start with defining what geologic structures are and how we talk about them in three dimensions. So the most basic geologic structure there is is bedding, and bedding is the word that geologists use to define the stratigraphic layers that form when sedimentary rocks pile up. In this case, the bedding is still horizontal and you can see the different geologic layers quite easily. Bedding, of course, can sometimes be tilted, and these beds are tilted. The red lines define the bedding planes, and you can see that they are tilted towards the left. If they started out as horizontal, then they tilted down, and we call this, uh, this tilt direction we would define as being to the left whatever compass direction that happens to be. The green planes that you can see here are, are in fact not geologic structures. Those were cut by the highway department to keep this whole thing from collapsing into the road, and those are plants that you see that define those green layers. Now we need a way to talk about the orientation of planes in three dimensions, and so we use two measurements, strike and dip. And Let's start with dip, because that's the easiest, I think, to get a handle on at first. So you can see in this block diagram that we have some tilted layers called inclined strata, and that the dip is defined as being 18 degrees in this case. The person who drew this diagram has filled it up with water, so you can see what a horizontal plane would look like. And so the dip is measured from the horizontal to the inclined bed, and it's, it's 18 degrees in this case. A horizontal bed has a zero dip. A vertical bed has a 90 degree dip. Now what is strike? So that's a really important concept. Strike is the horizontal line in any plane. There is only one horizontal line in any plane in any direction. And to prove this to yourself, just take something flat like your phone or maybe even your hand and hold it out in front of you and start to move it around and call it a plane in space and imagine now any two points on that plane make a line and there are always going to be two that are at the same elevation as it were and that define a horizontal line but only one horizontal line unless of course it's a horizontal plane and then all the lines are horizontal, but any other plane, at any other angle, there is only one horizontal line in that plane, and that line has a compass direction. You take your hand and hold it vertical and point it away from you, that's a north-south plane, and sets so one compass di direction, north-south. But you can tilt it so that the flat side points towards the west, dips west, or so that the flat side points towards the east, dips east, one strike line, two potential dip directions. Now this particular diagram, if we're going to assume that north is away from us, then that strike line is towards the northwest. And it looks to me like it's maybe pointing on a clock at about 10 o'clock. So we'll call it north 60 degrees west. 90 degrees west would be due west. So north 60 degrees west, and the dip is towards us. So if I take, take your hand, swing it around to about 60 degrees west parallel to that strike line, and then tip it in the direction of dip, the dip direction there is to the southwest, right? So this particular strike and dip would be north 60 degrees west, dipping 18 degrees southwest. Now that's really important because it tells us something about the processes that produce these tilted beds. If we can define the direction of strike and dip, the amount of dip, then we can say something about what tectonic processes it took to create this. So here's a series of strata. This happens to be in a beach area. If we had the right kind of compass, we could sit down on those gray rocks in the foreground and measure the strike line on those bedding planes and then measure the amount of dip perpendicular to that strike line. And the dip would be maybe 
20 degrees, something like that. Can you draw an arrow on this diagram that shows the direction of dip? Can it look something like that? Yeah. So from the horizontal, maybe that's 20 degrees dipping. Now before we leave the subject of planes, let's just talk for a minute about unconformities. Because unconformities are planes too. Remember we defined an unconformity as being a gap in time where something either eroded away or was never deposited in the first place and so we're missing some part of the geologic record. This picture is of the original unconformity, the most famous one of all, at Sicker Point in Scotland. This is where James Hutton first began to contemplate the length of geologic time. In the lower right of this picture is a series of rocks that are tilted almost vertical, and these are dark gray shales, and the green line defines their vertical bedding plane. And then in the upper left is another series of rocks, and these are red sandstones, and they're tipped, di dipped a little bit, but not a lot, just a small tilt. The blue line defines the unconformity in between, and that unconformity represents a large gap in time, but it is a plane. You can actually define a plane where these two rocks meet, and you can define a strike and dip on that plane. This is on a much smaller scale. I think at the very top of this picture you can see a bit of a pocket knife. So we're looking at an unconformity here on a small scale between tilted gray sandstone layers below and flat sandstone layers above. And this again is a gap in time. And here is an unconformity on a really big scale. You can see that it is a map of the Alabama-Georgia coastline. And so we're talking about a regional scale unconformity. The rocks in browns and pinks and oranges are the Wachita Mountains, and they're very old, a billion years old or more. And the rocks in greens in the foreground are nearly horizontal layers of sedimentary rocks that are much, much younger, on the order of 100,000 years to 500,000 years old. So there's a huge gap of time here, and it's an unconformity on a regional scale. Again, it is a plane, and we can define it that way.